You know the Bible prophesies. All right, let's see it. That there will be a million man army come from the east that speaks of China and that the Euphrates River will dry up so that this army can pass over into Israel. So there is no such prophecy anywhere in the Bible. This is a blithe and misguided conflation and misreading of Revelation 9.16 and Revelation 16.13, which, by the way, are two texts that use first century Jewish apocalyptic imagery to try to exhort late first century Christians to remain faithful in the face of ostensible persecution from the Roman Empire. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything that has happened or that will ever happen after the first century CE. Now in Revelation 9.16 we have this idea that there are these four angels bound at the Euphrates River which is riffing on a story told in the first book of Enoch which is fan fiction based on Genesis 6. And according to Revelation 9, those angels will be released and they will marshal a force of 200 million soldiers on horseback. And these soldiers will have shiny multicolored breastplates and their horses will have lion heads and they will breathe fire and they will have scorpion tails. And no such army has ever or will ever exist because it is first century CE Jewish apocalyptic imagery. Now, in a separate chapter of Revelation, Revelation 16, verse 13, it talks about the Euphrates River drying up to make way for the kings of the east to cross over to attack the land of Israel. And this is a reference to the Parthians. We see a reference to this in the Sibylline Oracles, uh, which says at one point, And thereupon into the west shall come the wrangle of a newly wakened war, and bearing a huge spear, Rome's fugitive shall cross Euphrates with many myriads. Uh, so this is more imagery that's appealing to expectations, and particularly regarding the return of Nero, who most scholars believe uh, died by his own hand in around 68 CE. But some people thought that he had uh, not really died, he was in exile, he would come back from the dead, or some people thought he had escaped to the Parthians and would marshal a force with the Parthians to cross the Euphrates and come attack the land of Israel. So Revelation 9 and 16 have entirely and exclusively to do with late first century CE geopolitics. And to willfully wrench the book of Revelation from its initial context and misread it so it sounds like it's a reference to what Whatever is happening today is something that has been going on for many, many generations, and it has never been accurate and will never be accurate because the book of Revelation is about the late first century CE. Did you know in the last few years something supernatural has taken place and the Euphrates River has dried up? So the Euphrates has not dried up, and there's absolutely nothing supernatural about the fact that the water levels have become dangerously low in recent years. Decades ago, a series of dams were constructed, particularly in Syria and Turkey upstream, and they have been wrangling over access to that water for many years, which has contributed to much lower water levels. Climate change has also contributed to that. About 15 years ago, it got dangerously low, and then last year, uh, it also reached record lows. So it's a problem that is affecting the lives of millions of people who are suffering as a result of this. It's not supernatural, uh, and the river has not dried up. Don't take my word, go home and Google it. You will see that unexplainedly, the Euphrates River that has flowed forever has dried up. Again, it has not dried up, and this is very much explainable. Dams, climate change, those are the reasons that the water levels have become dangerously low in recent decades. Fulfilling biblical prophecy. Nope. What about Ezekiel 38? Nothing about Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 talks about two countries, Gog and Magog. No, it doesn't. Verse 2 has the Son of Man turn his face against Gog of the land of Magog. This is pretty much universally agreed by scholars to be a reference to the name of a leader from the name of a land. And if you would like information on how Gog and Magog have been interpreted in the past, Edwin Yamauchi's book, Foes from the Northern Frontier, Invading Hordes from the Russian Steppes, is a wonderful discussion on the history of the scholarship of these countries that are ostensibly identified with places 
like Russia and Iran and China. The Bible, before it was even in existence, prophesied Russia. LOL, no it didn't. Gog and Magog represents Russia and Iran. The groups mentioned in Ezekiel 38 would have had to had significance to Ezekiel's audience, and scholars are in pretty widespread agreement that these are nations and peoples associated with the land of Anatolia, which has absolutely nothing to do with Russia and Iran. And it says at one point there will be a war break out around Israel, and Russia's enemies, Gog and Magog, will surround Israel from the north and from the south. Now it's interesting that in the last few months, Russia has entered in to a treaty with Iran, just like the Bible prophesied. Iran is funding two terrorist groups, Hamas and Hezbollah. Hezbollah is in the north of Israel. Hamas is in the south of Israel. Right now, Hamas is trying to convince Hezbollah, let's attack Israel together. We've got a chance right now. That would be the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 of when these enemies surround Israel. You say, what happens? Well, the Bible says that God will supernaturally step in and he will defend Israel and he will defeat all their enemies. Do you realize we could be watching that happen on our TVs right now? Right now. Do you realize that people on all sides of this conflict who are entirely innocent of the machinations of these systems are dying and are being displaced and are being unhoused and are being tortured and are having their families ripped apart and you're excited about the prospect of watching this on TV? This is not a fulfillment of anything, and the notion this is something to be excited about and that we get to sit back and watch God supernaturally intervene is just divesting yourself of any responsibility for trying to move towards a resolution to these very complex and long-standing tensions. This is not something to be excited about. This is not a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. This is innocent people dying. The question is, will the rapture take place before this or just after? So there is and never will be any such thing as a rapture. Uh, this is based on a misreading of 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 17 uh, by John Nelson Darby in the 19th century. And it really only continues to have circulation within American evangelical circles. Most of the rest of the world that adopted it at some point in the past has realized that it is a misreading of the Bible. See, Darby misunderstood the imagery of uh, rising up to meet Jesus in the air. This is based on pretty stock imagery associated with the inhabitants of a city coming outside the city to go meet a newly arriving sovereign outside of the city to then lead them into the city where they can take up their rule. And all 1 Thessalonians 4 is doing is reorienting this vertically so that when Jesus comes down to uh, take up rule in his kingdom, the people will rise up to meet him in the clouds. And this is imagery based on the uh, appropriation of storm deity imagery on the part of Adonai from Baal, the Northwest Semitic storm deity. But the idea is everyone will rise up to meet him and then usher him down into his kingdom. Darby misunderstood that imagery and produced this ideology that has resulted in untold uh, suffering and trauma and anxiety on the part of people who were told that one day everybody could just disappear from the earth and they better eat their vegetables so that they are not left behind. That's how close we are to seeing biblical prophecy fulfilled right before our eyes. So I would ask you what my dad asked. If your heart were to stop or if the trump of God were to sound, would you be ready to stand before God? And if you've been standing by allowing Islamophobia and allowing anti-Semitism to foment and allowing the world's poor and oppressed and orphaned and widow to be displaced and brutalized and tortured and murdered just so you can grab your popcorn and watch God step in and take care of things themselves so that you don't have to then the answer to that question is no.